Yeah. Yeah, we are so close to BBG. Uh, I uh, am a little bit a part of the staff there. I do help, but uh, honestly, most of my help has been making the graphics and making sure that they look fine. Uh, other than that, everybody else has been taking charge. I know NPC put a lot of work into I'm pretty sure NPC put a... NPC, you put a lot of work into it, right? You're not letting me lie. <laughs> Jangle Storm as well. Uh, of course, Kowal hasn't been around here for a while, uh, but, you know, he's great. He's in a long-term relationship. He's doing pretty awesome. Uh, and it's just really exciting that I get to hear a little bit more from Kowal. Ah, NPC has done enough. Well, you know what? Pre-stream party. Go ahead and throw your hands up. But I think it's time for us to go find out who the first GM is. So give me a second. Crappy, take us over. Yeah, past all that firm belief and over to the GM reveal. Please welcome on in the guy who hates cucumbers, Doe Wolf. I swear. I swear, Doe Wolf. Gotta get your opinions right. Wait, first in match chat, and now in stream. Uh, but, oh, the best part is they can't hear you. <laughs> that is, stop. Oh, they can no. hear you now. Dang it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about pickles? Okay, uh, Doe Wolf actually likes cucumbers. It's just I'm trying to spread slander. Uh, it's slander and libel because it was in written form. Oh, that's true. I didn't put it in the newspapers, though. Is it libel if you don't publish it? Uh, you publish everything on the internet. I didn't publish the that. Second you, the second you press post, that's publishing. I can... No. No, that's talking. It's conversation. But it's through the written... Whatever. You know what else was published? <laughs> the new adventures of Barry Kate and Ashley for the Game Boy Color. <laughs> Oh, it certainly was published. Uh, and it turns out that the four players coming up are going to be battling it out, trying to make as much progress as they can in Mary-Kate and Ashley because you love friends. And you love giving crap to friends. And, and there is going to be complete friendship in this game. There's going to be no acts of cruelty to any friends over the course of this game. Most certainly. Uh, there will be a little cruelty. No, no cruelty, zero cruelty. There will be zero. Nobody on any player's screen is going to ever die. Oh, is the dog in it? Yes, we have a doggo. Is that like an important part of this game? Oh, it's a very important part of the game. Oh, okay. I guess that's cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working on getting everything captured. I will make sure I share my stream on Discord with you in a little bit, Doe Wolf, so you can watch live. Uh, but I do need to get them captured and looking fantastic. They are just too, our players are too free. That's the problem. <laughs> we need to put them in. We need to put them in player jail. In player no, my jail. players were good. They, my players were all here on time. I'm yeah. proud of them. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? Today's a good day. Uh, we had no, all the players see. on time, uh, which. I don't know why. Last week was like, let's go ahead and not be live for, a, like, not be on time. And it's like, thank you, players who actually are on time. You make life a lot easier for uh, all of the volunteers here, which we have a lot of people who help out, Doe Wolf. Uh, yeah, jog my memory. I, I know I'm, I'm glad that you're here GMing, but this isn't your first year GMing, right? You were you were here last year. I was here last year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you very quickly became known for all of your Sonic games that you gave out, specifically the, the Sonic Golf. I, I've given out. I only think I've given out two Snolf games. <laughs> I tried to give out a lot of Snolf games, right? Because. You know, you, you just ask people, hey, what's everyone's familiarity with random 2D Sonic game? And then everyone's just like, oh, yeah, I played that, I played that, I've never played that. And like, okay, well, we can't give this out now, I guess. Yeah, so and to be fair, like, watching the match uh, chat, I know that, you know, this is a redraw because the players had already played one of the games that you wanted to offer. Uh, which, honestly... I was really surprised. <laughs> Did not expect anyone to have played... 
the, yeah, play like, that one. But. Well, not only that, there are multiple things that would have, like, vetoed the match. Oh, there were. And, it just, uh, it had actually almost didn't get vetoed. It. It, this is the second week in a second time in a row trying to give out that game that it almost didn't get vetoed. Someday I'm going to get to show off that game, and then everyone will know what we're talking about, and it'll be glorious. Yeah, but for now, y'all can keep it a mystery. Pulkitsune, thank you so much for the sub. I do want everybody to know this is uh, the official Amazon holiday September, uh, sponsored by Amazon, I guess. I it's mean, not so technically it's not sponsored it is. By Subway? Are you sure it's not sponsored by Subway? I... Why would Subway sponsor that? Why would Subway not sponsor September? Because this is Twitch.tv. This isn't Subway... Subwaystreams.html <laughs> font. I don't know what... <laughs> they would probably come up with, like, the worst naming scheme. <laughs> HTML... No. Yeah. I don't know. They, they, they've had good... They've had good promotions. Like, Are you okay? Maybe. Do you I don't know. That something that sounds weird. No. I'm very confused what you heard. Don't wolf. I'm okay. Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and judge you anyway. <laughs> Stop judging me. I just. That's all I do here. That's like my job. My job is to judge. No, your job is to laugh. It's the referee's job to judge. Judge and be judged in return, just like the song from uh, Moulin Rouge. Not familiar with this song. Well, okay, the song was actually loving, something about loving and being loved in return. It had nothing to do with oh, judging, that's, but... That's very different. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> like eternally waking up today and you don't have the right oh no you do not have the right I live west of you i have more problems waking up at this hour than you do oh yeah you do uh i know it's, it's i had to get up at 10 can i blame a anubis Sunday. i did an escape room yesterday that's why i want to blame anubis it was Ooh. the curse of anubis uh we got out but it was so hot it was it's... so hot <laughs> Did they not have air conditioning in the escape room? Like, they had... I found the vent, and I stood under that for most of the escape room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, by... Uh, it, it had a lot of puzzles, things we had to deal with at that time, so it, it was fine. Uh, not only that, but with the number of people that we had, we really needed somebody to just stand there and not do too much so that they would be out of the way. I just kept hmm. my hand on a specific location because I'm like, the hints said I need to keep my hand here while something else happens. So I'm just going to stay here <laughs> and see if anybody can manage to touch the things that they're supposed to touch. And eventually they did. Hmm. Took a little while. They had to weigh a heart against uh, a feather. A feather, yeah. Uh, and the this great thing is that out. I got to reach into a dead man's rib cage and pull the heart out. <laughs> so how did they make the two equal weight? Because like I've held had feathers before, and I've definitely held still beating hearts before. First and off, they don't weigh the same. The scales weren't actually scales. It was painted on the wall, and then like platforms for the scales were sort of like just screwed onto the wall, something like that. Huh. I'm not supposed to reveal any of the secrets or oh, what they oh, did. I'm so I, oh, uh oh, I, I'm but, sorry. I didn't realize this was magician territory. I mean, I don't think it's, like, really too surprising. If you know, like, 1% of the information about Anubis, you know there's going to be a scale somewhere. This is true. This is oh, true. I also stole a Zonk. That was even better. A Zonk? Onk. A oh, yeah, Onk. That makes a lot more sense. I didn't steal a Zonk. Uh, yeah, I took I, a nap in the corner. With, I hope you didn't steal a Zonk. Dead Guy McGee. Oh, yeah, the great thing is that, like, it was attached to a rope, and, like, Justin kept hearing people saying, What is this rope for? What's this rope for? What is this rope? And, you know, I swear, we had so many people there uh, that it got asked, like, eight times because nobody else noticed that I took the onk. 
<laughs> so, so you, you needed to leave like a little calling card, like a like a phantom thief calling card, and say like, "I took the egg from right here." I mean, yeah, sort of. That would be helpful. But yeah, I'd say uh, that escape room. If you're in the Salt Lake area, uh, the Curse of Anubis was a lot of fun. It's done by the same people who make the really cool. Uh, I think it's the 13th Street Haunted House. Uh, and that was one of the best haunted houses I've been in uh, in the state. So, like, highly recommend it, everybody, if you get the chance and you're in Salt Lake. Go check out their escape room if you like them. Yeah. Apparently the one that we did was, like, the easiest on the list, but also everyone was like, We love Anubis! We gotta do Anubis! He was a big boy, too. He was, like, taller than us. Hmm? Oh, not- Oh, also, the haunted house was giant, uh, and in an abandoned, like, sawmill or something like that. Uh, some abandoned uh. factory of sorts, and, uh... That does sound haunted. It was really fun. Recommended. No, it was not Anubis 2. I did- I have escaped from Anubis 2. But I have never escaped from the OG Anubis. He, I don't know when I die, I think he's gonna get me. Don't worry, I'll I'll protect you and/or make your heart weigh equal to a feather. Yeah. You just gotta shave off a lot of stuff from that heart. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you for having heart flakes on the scale. That's great. Are we gonna clean this? I love the music here. Why does it have? Like, the evil, creepy music. Oh, everybody's ready! So we need we need chat to spam faces or emotes or something. Yeah, spam, what would be girly, good? spam any girly emotes, spam any hair emotes, spam any dog emotes. If you have cucumbers... Well. <laughs> spam cu if you have a cucumber emote, first of all, tell me where you got it so I can uh, subscribe to them. Second of all, spam it. Yeah, spam, because we're gonna do the countdown! Any crime by dinner time, that's right. Yep. Okay, doing the countdown, everybody wish them luck! Oh, there- that's just cucumber- oh, better Twitch TV has a cucumber emoji, good to know. You can't subscribe to better Twitch TV, that's unfortunate. Yeah, thank you everybody who is subscribing today and this month, by the way, hopefully it is- uh, a decent discount for y'all, uh, but it definitely helps to support this and keep it going long term so that we can have Kuso for years in the future. Yeah. yeah, so welcome to the first case. Uh, the third tale has already died. <laughs> um, yeah, so this game is basically a uh, Lost Vikings clone. So you got your three characters. Uh, you got Mary Kate, who is in blue. Uh, she has the superpower of being able to jump extra high. Okay. You got Clue, the dog, who has the superpower of being able to be a dog. And then you got Ashley in green, who has the superpower of being able to throw things, like switches, to open puzzle piece doors, and also Clue. She can also just throw the dog. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> What, that is, that is the, the only form skill? of attack in this game as well. It's just throw the dog at every enemy. Oh, so basically, yeah, I saw Seth died to, like, the rat. I assume mm -hmm. you would probably throw the dog over there then. Or is the dog able to jump on the rat? Nope, there is no Goomba stopping in this game. Uh, you can... So... There's a, so you see that you got the puzzle piece, and that's the goal, so you get the puzzle piece. There's also the three paper clues scattered throughout the stage that you can pick up to get a hint. Um, as you can see on this stage in particular, getting the clues is much harder than just beating the stage by an order of magnitude. Okay. So, the clues are traps. Every single... Mm -hmm. And the hints they give you are worthless. Really? <laughs> I love it. What about... Okay. I mean... Like, are, are you sure they're actually worthless? Like, what do the clues say? Uh, they say, have, have Ashley throw a switch and then Mary Kate can jump up to the puzzle piece. Okay, so we kind of knew that. Ah, Third yeah. Tail jumped right on the spikes. You don't want to do that. Nope. It's not safe. 
yeah. And then, so, and then beyond that, you know, people can be jumping on other people's heads, so, like... The dog can jump on Ashley's head, and Ashley can jump on Mary-Kate's head, and Mary-Kate can jump on the dog. It's very... Strange order of operations for who can jump on whose head. I don't understand. Yeah, you gotcha. You just sort of jump on people's heads until, you know, you don't fall through. I love it. Uh, I have to ask. Yeah. Is this on Cusa Grande because it's a bad game or because it's a Mary Kate and Ashley game? A little bit of both. Okay. Um, if the game, the game's not good. Uh, but and it's it's kind of silly. It involves throwing dogs at enemies, I, which I don't know. Uh, felt like a fun thing to throw in. But yeah, it's definitely not the worst game. But it's. I don't know, it's charming. I think Third Tail, yeah, Third Tail has gotten up to the puzzle piece. There we go. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Third Tail is currently in the lead. Do you have unlimited lives here? Uh, so they do have a finite number of lives, however, they are allowed to make safe states at the beginning of every level because you basically get a password every half hour in this game, and that's a little bit too long. That's, yeah, that's not great. And because it's a puzzle game, like, I don't know. It, it has to be frustrating to be like, I've done this puzzle 50 times. There's no surprise anymore. I know yep. how to do this puzzle, but I have to keep doing it. Over and over. It looks like Third Tail's making very quickly. They're figuring out how this uh, game's logic works. I... By the way, people might be a little bit shocked, especially if you weren't, like, huge into a uh, full house when you were younger. Uh, Mary-Kate and Ashley had a huge influence in the 90s. In fact, one of my sisters was named Michelle after Michelle in Full House. One of my sisters was named Stephanie after Stephanie in Full House. Uh, I have two siblings named because of Full House. That's... Kind of impressive. Isn't it? I, I I cannot say that I have a single sibling named after Full House. I feel I like do. I'm missing out. Yeah. Uh, it's almost a surprise that we didn't get a DJ in our family, but I think my... I, I think it's kind of understandable. I don't think DJ would have flown in my family. They're like, why are you naming a girl DJ? Because of Full House? Yeah, it has to be because of Full House, right? I mean, you just give them any name that starts with D and a middle name that starts with J, and you're good. <laughs> uh, in Utah, you don't give girls middle names. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Back up, you just, so... Only boys have middle... what? In general. Uh, like, it, it's a weird cultural thing that, uh isn't always 100% true, but it uh, is true in a lot of cases that uh, it's just the boys that have middle names. Uh, there are lots of girls who don't get them. Uh, why? Because their last name will become their middle name when they get married, because that's how it, that's the focus in Utah. If you're a female, they're gonna try to get you married. Really I mean, quickly. I feel like they're gonna try to get everyone married. Well, as I mean, well, but... yeah, but like, there's so much emphasis uh, here, especially religion-wise. Uh, for if you are a woman, then the biggest goal in life should be getting married and having kids and being a mother. Uh, like that yeah. is a huge, huge, giant part of the culture. So yeah, uh, having middle names uh, is. A little bit less common for uh, for huh. females here. Yeah, that, that is that is strange. Yeah, there's something it's there's something similar similar with Japan where like when you had not about being literate, like you'd have parents basically pay someone to come up with kanji for their son's names, but wouldn't but wouldn't pay out the money for their daughter's names. So. You had a bunch of people late 19th, early 20th century, a bunch of women who like, didn't have kanji names at all, just had hiragana names. Really? Um, Interesting. Yeah, but, I mean, that's... That was 120 years ago. Yeah! <laughs> Most of the... Very few of those people are still alive. What is going on in Utah? Uh, 
but... Yeah, well, then again, it's like I think about my middle name and, like, the middle name that I have uh, turns out to be, uh... Like, I turned out to get a middle name based off of somebody who, uh, after he died, we learned some terrible things that he did. And I, I'm, I think that not having a middle name would have been better than learning that stuff about what my middle <laughs> name is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let, let me see their pros and cons. Yeah, my, my middle name is just my father's middle, uh, father's first name. And my father's first name is my grandfather's middle name. And then... My great grandfather is literally my dad's name's the other way around. It's my family is very uncreative with names, is what I'm saying here. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, okay. My my real name is Brian. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Where uh, it's basically impossible to dox me because I have already doxed myself 50 times. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> My, my first name is Brian. Apparently my parents were trying to decide between Brian and Calvin. And I'm very glad that I ended up not Calvin. But <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes. I don't... I don't think Calvin and Hobbes was a thing when I was born. Like, when did... I don't, I don't know when it started, but you're probably like, right. Like, I think Calvin Klein was probably the most well-known Calvin mean, like, at that time. The underwear? Yes, the underwear. Uh, they talk about it in Back to the Future, right? Not okay, sure which sure. Back to the Future, but one of them. We've done it. I mean, there's only one Back to the Future. Actually, I've never seen... There are three I've of never them. Seen, I've never seen any past the first one. Okay, the <laughs> first one's... Fantastic. The second one is what I would say flawed but good, and the third one is fantastic. Like if if you have never seen Back to the Future three, it's required watching. Do Wolf. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting it on the syllabus for movies oh, no. that I want uh, you to watch. Are we are we making a <laughs> canon of movies? A uh, canon of Cusco Grande movies that are good? Question mark. No, it's just. Uh, what I have to say about any of the trilogies that came out in the 80s and 90s, most of the time, the first and the third movies were top tier, and the second was okay. I, I feel like watching the second one would be worth it. Uh, it's very cheesy, Back to the Future, uh, but you actually get to see, like, this fever dream future that they have. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I, like, I recommend it, but I also acknowledge it's not going to be nearly as good as Back to the Future 1 and 3. It's just yeah, like I, Indiana Jones. 1 and 3, great. Second one, it's good. But honestly, not as good. Which one's the second one? Uh, Temple of Doom. Yeah, I don't know. I like Temple of Doom, but it's well, been a while. Well, I like Temple of Doom, but it's not as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark or The Last Crusade. I mean, sure, but they're, they're both better than The Crystal Skull. Well, well I haven't than the seen Skull. that. Well, no but, one has, because it's bad. But yeah, like I said, see, the first and the third, that's where it's at. The second, it's okay. Still what worth about watching. the Star Wars original trilogy? Uh... Yeah, I, I think that a lot of people at the time thought that uh, Star Wars Episode Two wasn't as good, but that's because it's a lot of story building and a lot of like breath. I, I thought people love Empire Strikes Back. Like I thought that was people's most a lot of people's favorite. I think these days it is, uh, but when it first came out, I think that the first and third were more popular. And mm -hmm. by that I mean the fourth and the sixth. I don't know. I wasn't there at the time. I can't speak for what people were thinking back in the uh, early 80s. Yeah, it took a little while for people to, like, sort of understand some of the weird moments in uh, The Empire Strike Back. But I'm pretty sure, like, uh, review-wise, Return of the Jedi did better than Empire, huh. Empire Strikes Back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, w I would say, though, that, like, opinions about Back to the Future and Indiana Jones uh, haven't really changed. And uh, for Star Wars, they have. And that's that. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so now that we want to start the fight about whether or not the worst movie in the sequel trilogy is uh, is the second, is the eighth movie. Do we want to start that fight? 
I feel like that's true, though. Like, I, I will say, I, I like the eighth movie. No, I, I liked it. Like, I actually liked the new trilogy. I I feel uh, like uh, it was a, a big move away from one through three uh, and an attempt to sort of capture a lot of the spirit of the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, and I understand why some people didn't like it. It's popular to hate things that are popular. <laughs> I mean... Look, when the Star Wars prequels came out, uh, the Star Wars fans were all about them, and then slowly started to realize, oh, I hate this. And at this point, I, I feel like I'm like, I'm kind of okay with them, I just have no desire to go watch them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, know, I, I don't like J.J. Abrams in general. I very consistently have just... His storytelling style is basically just make a bunch of mysteries and don't worry about what the solutions are. And I want there to be solution. I want there to be answers to the mysteries in my stories. So it doesn't really work well. Uh, okay. His style of fiction for me. That's fair. I I feel like I don't know. I, I'd have to go and look up like various J.J. Abrams films. I'm sure there are some that and I so genuinely love. So he did love. Lost. I've his, his... never seen Lost. Okay, he did the new Star Trek. The first new, the uh, first new Star Trek, yeah. Um, okay, I've I've never watched that. Or oh wait, do you mean the movie or the show? The movie. Okay, yeah, I did see that. It was fine. It wasn't great. It wasn't Star Trek-y, uh, but it was fine. It's just like Star Trek is like. I feel like he, he didn't get the heart of what Star Trek is about. You oh, know, he absolutely did not understand what Star Trek was about. <laughs> like it's it is. Not sci-fi, right? It's not sci-fi in the sense of we have new technology, how does this... Like, that's what classic sci-fi is. We have new technology, how does this impact the human condition? And That's what classic... The new, uh, they call it hard sci-fi, and he definitely went for more of the soft sci-fi yeah, I mean, approach. Went for, yeah, he went for more fantasy sci-fi, I guess. So uh, I, I'd say that it's it. more... Like, the, the two genres of sci-fi that you can think about hard and soft hard focuses on a lot of the mechanics of science fiction and uh, a lot less on characters whereas soft sci-fi really focuses on character arcs and uh the individual people and doesn't care quite as much about like the technical explanations and such uh the original star trek was very much hard science fiction with a few soft sci-fi elements thrown in yeah, like you can have yeah. character you can and should have character arcs in your high so and your hard sci-fi oh um, yeah we have evolved from the days of asimov and this is a good thing but like if if, if, if it's just a waving a magic wand, essentially, to just have the sci-fi do what you want, that's that's not Star Trek. I love that Chad is asking if we're actually going to talk about the game. No. <laughs> do I want to talk about this game? Guess what? They're all on the same level, and they've been we stuck can, in this misery this for ages. So this, game, this game is actually a clone <laughs> of another game called my, my, The Adventures of Maya the Bee, which was only released in Europe. Uh, so they... When they so when they poured this game over the U.S., they're like, "Well, nobody in the U.S. knows what Maya the Bee is. We're just going to take whatever. Let's just take some random thing." And they're like, "And so this is why <laughs> we have a couple of girls throwing their dog around, which is I'm pretty sure not wasn't anything that someone would have come up with normally." Yeah, uh, you know, I've never actually seen the Mary Kate Nashley show that this is based off of, but it makes me think of like old home movies that we made when uh, we were younger because they had about that quality of acting. <laughs> I just gotta yeah. say, like, kids, it's fine if they're not great actors. Oh no, you tried to kill the bug, but unfortunately the dog stood up too fast. Yep. This no, is like, dumb. Trying to, attacking with the dog is... Like, because the dog is a character, and you auto lose if any character dies. Like, if the do if you if the dog ricochets into a spike, it's just it's just congrats, you're you're restarting. Um, yeah. However, like this isn't the end of the reskin. So this was what? originally originally supposed to be a uh, a South Park game. So the reskin was going to be South Park. The game was originally going to be South Park. Wait, the, and then it so, got reskinned into Maya the Bee, and then it got reskinned <laughs> into Mary Kate and Ashley. What? 
So that is the South presumably Park the Maya the Bee. You know, okay, which one are you gonna give to this game? I mean, My but throwing your friends at enemies is definitely more of a South Park thing. I so mean, this all makes sense to me. Yeah, that that does make sense. I wonder who they would be throwing. Probably Kenny. Probably Kenny. It, it would have had to be Kenny. Absolutely. There is a there is a leaked version of the South Park skin. I but I've never really? played it or seen it, so I'm not quite sure. Okay. Okay. Or Ike. I guess they could have been throwing Ike. Yeah, that would make sense. By the way, chat uh, is asking, can you throw the other characters or just the dog? And no. as far as I know, just the dog. Only Ashley can throw the dog, and only the dog can be thrown. You are not allowed to throw your your twin at, at, at enemies. By the way, the third tail moved on to the next level, and Sath is right behind. Uh, yeah, very yeah, close race. As per popular demand by chat, we are talking about the game now. <laughs> Is it popular demand or is it? Is it I, I'm not sure it's popular, that popular supply. Demand. I don't know. Like and Tempestral onto the next stage as well. <laughs> yeah, the stage that walled everyone did wall everyone for a while because there is a pixel perfect jump that you have to do with Ashley in this little, or as Mary Kate, excuse me, in this little bottom area. The blue shirted one. You have to do it as the blue shirt. Um, not really sure. Yeah, when you have identical twins, it's a little bit like, uh, I don't know, which one's known for wearing blue? Apparently it's Mary Kate. But they're not identical, right? I think they're fraternal. What? They I have to be. No. I'm pretty sure they're fraternal twins. Chad yeah. is saying they're fraternal? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've Honestly, just been though, they all look, along because they look sisters apparently look similar. As it turns out, sometimes siblings do look very similar. Identical twin, like, they look very much like identical twins. But if they're I fraternal mean, I, twins, that is really amazing. Yeah, I mean, I look nothing like my sister, so this is just all strange to me. But... Yeah. Uh, with that said, you know, uh, considering that uh, childhood, or, you know, being a baby, is essentially, uh, let's roll the dice and see which of the genes you show up with, you can get some kids that look very, very similar. And, heck, they were close enough that, like, I imagine they may have thought that the kids were identical for a long time until they're like, oh, wait a second, let's look at the DNA, it's not identical. Oh my gosh! I, I think you know that from prenatal. So, like, I, I don't. I thought that was something they just would detect. In the eighties? How the crap are they gonna detect? Like, do they have like they, they, identical they, twin they, radar in the eighties? Yeah, they know at birth based on the afterbirth is what people are saying in chat. No, I'm not uh, this kind okay. of doctor, so very quickly getting outside of my expertise, but. Okay. Oh no! Don't look! Don't look! The oh wow! I can't believe the third tail did not lose a uh, clue right there. Gotcha. But yeah, just a giant library full of rats. This is not a problem. It's fine. Not going to panic. Nobody rats, panic. The rats, the rats are not going to eat the your books. Rats. rats don't eat books because they are the rats. Okay, uh, I, I guess Chad is giving some good information, and based off of, like, Oh, the poor dog, you tried to kill the rat, but unfortunately you killed the dog, because that happens. Why does the cat, like, run over space? It's... I, I don't understand. Presumably it was an enemy that could fly in the by the Bee version. I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, okay. generally, if there's anything weird in this game, I just generally assume it made more sense in either Maya the Bee or South Park. Just, that's my assumption. Yeah. Honestly, uh, I, I'd say uh, any of the kids growing up in Hollywood having to deal with all of the drama that comes with being uh, actors, you know, uh, being able to get past the child star stage and, like, have a successful life, you know, it's always props, and 
I, I give them huge props for it being like we don't want to act anymore. We want to do our own thing and be fashion designers. And it's like, I don't know what you're designing. I haven't gone and like put on any Mary Kate and Ashley pants lately. Oh, I, I, not, but have your sisters who are named after them put on this these fashion clothes? Probably not. Hmm. Turns out that uh, a lot of clothes designed by like fashion people cost a lot, you know? I can't imagine yeah. that a pair of Mary Kate's pants is, <laughs> is going to be Why super are you cheap. Her, why are you stealing her pants? <laughs> I'm not stealing her pants. Well, why are you taking her pants then? Th they're hers. <laughs> well, <laughs> you want to go buy some pants on eBay? Have I got a deal for you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah, um, the thing is, like, I don't really keep track of what's happening in a lot of celebrities' lives. Uh, there are a few celebrities that we know a lot about what's happening. Uh, like, Britney Spears has very much been, a, like, you know, was huge for a time, and then a lot of people forgot about her, and now she's huge again, being talked about, and actually, like, getting a lot of, hopefully, justice for things that happened when yeah, she was I younger, her, and her I think that's great. is very strange. Yeah! Yeah! But... How are the... Let's see, how are the players doing? I don't doing? know, we've got oh, this jumping crab spider. I thought Zap Josh beat this level. Did he? I don't know, he might have game over to not made a safe state. I'm you not may sure. be right. Uh, but yeah, Sap is doing this level. This is uh, the level before... One or two levels before uh, where Tempest Stroll, Third Tail, and Martin are. I think Martin passed the level that Tempest Stroll and Third Tail are on, I think. Or vice versa. I don't know. No, Martin is a level behind the third tail, I'm Fine. pretty sure. Fine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Sath just passed the previous level and is currently tied with Martin. By the way, everybody, for this game, in general, we track progress based off of the most... Uh, the, the best push that players have had. And in this case, it's very easy to see when they've beaten a level, but there's not yep. really a solid mark of progress in a level until they've beaten it. So in most cases, when it comes to that, if players tie, then it comes down to whoever made it to that place first. Yep. There, yeah, and as people are noting in chat, we got fall damage. Uh, if you fall a little distance, yeah. you just get dizzy. And if you fall a big distance, uh, congratulations. Why did you throw your dog into a pit? Stop throwing your dog into pits. I mean, it's it's kind of true, though. You don't want to take too much fall damage. Like, fall damage is real. Fall damage is real, and I wanted excise from every single video game. I... There is no game that is improved by the existence of fall damage. None. I'm not sure I agree with that. Okay, what game is improved by the existence of fall damage? Oh, see, I'm trying to think. I'm not doing a great job thinking about that. Uh, I can barely brain right now. I'm trying. Wait, well, the puzzle the meantime, was... The puzzle honey? was a beehive. A honey. This is, this is a reskin of Maya the Bee. Anyway, so now they're on the of final... Course it's a beehive. <laughs> This is so stupid. It's, I love it. I love it. Now they have to collect a giant heart beehive, I guess. I'm not sure why it's a heart beehive, but it definitely is. So I have to. I, I wonder what mystery is this they're solving. Let me see if I can find like a manual for this game. Uh, there are cutscenes, but our players have skipped them because uh, they're in a blind race to go fast. Uh, yeah, third child's trying to jump and throw the dog at the same time. Doesn't work. Can't do it. Yeah. I think one thing that I would say is that fall damage can be helpful in some ways uh, by adding risk and reward mechanics to it. Think of Banjo-Kazooie, for example. Uh, a lot of the tougher jumps that you make in the game would not be scary if there was no fall damage. Uh, just imagine, like, the, the, is it the 
TikTok, Click Clock Woods, whatever it is, uh, where, where you're climbing the giant tree in the middle. Uh, that has some terrifying jumps that you have to make. I mean, it'd, just be, it'd be just as terrifying if the punishment was you have to climb all the way back up, which it also is. Yeah, but that's more boring punishment. I don't want boring punishment. I want, like, if you're going to have a punishment. life system, threaten them with death. Chekhov's gun. Don't have a life system in your puzzle game. Well, that too, but... Like, if you if you have... If you're an N64 game that has a life system like every N64 game, you have to threaten the life, okay? We're not playing... What's it called? The 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 uh, getting over it with Benefati. We're playing Banjo Kazooie and Mary Kate games. Well, we're playing the case of the volcano mystery. Did so my other guy to volcano? volcano? Um, you know, I could look up what the story is for this case real quick. Where is my wonderful Let's Play video? I have run into a few games that uh, kind of are comedic when it comes to quote-unquote falling damage. I'd say not well implemented. Mostly I'm thinking about Miracle Roppet. Uh, if you've ever played Miracle Roppet for NES, if you fall too far, your sort of mech suit gets like... <sighs> it's almost like cartoony squished, and you have to jump a few times in order to get out of the weird squished... Uh, animation, uh, and the thing is, like, that. while that's te not technically damage, it does limit how high you can jump, and it often gets you killed, because you're like, oh, I normally could jump higher, but I got squished. <laughs> but does it really add anything to the game that you can't jump higher? Uh, I would say for that game, no, not really. But I, I'm still going to be a defender of Banjo-Kazooie's level design, relying on actually having the dangerous jumps. Uh, where fall damage, you know... <sighs> you don't want your players to be bored, you want them to be tense. Uh, and if it's like you, uh, you are trying to do some tricky jumps, but the only consequence is that you have to do a whole climb over again, that's just not... It's not fun enough, is what I would say. I guess, but I mean, also, like, Banjo Kazooie is not one shotting you from fall damage either. Sometimes. It's... It depends on how far you fall. It escalates. Okay, it shouldn't ever one shot you. I'm going to hold by that. Absolutely. I feel like if you're jumping from the top of a, like, 200 foot tree, it is fine to one shot you. Like,. It also depends on how many health upgrades you have, which also adds an incentive to explore in the game and get health upgrades so that if you do make a mistake, you don't immediately die. Like, uh, I'd say that uh, I usually would agree with you that fall damage doesn't improve much, but there are a handful of cases where it's used well. Uh, you know, bad mechanics can be somewhat good mechanics if done in the right way. We will just have to agree to disagree. But I did look up the plot of this case. So it turns out that their friend Freddy in Mexico uh, lost a plant. So the girls have traveled south of the portrait with their dog to investigate a missing plant. <laughs> what? They lost a plant? They lost oh, a plant. No. That is that is the case. And they are going into Mexico with the plan of solving this case by dinner time. I hope they're getting escorted. They, they have a dog. That's an escort. Uh, well, okay. I mean, the 90s, you were allowed to, like, go outside on your own and just, like, possibly almost get murdered because parents were too busy. That's how the I 90s mean, were, you I know? Mean, should be how, honestly, that seems fine to me. Like, let kids go out and explore. But they'll be fine. I would say, uh, depending on where you live. Uh, uh well, I, okay, sure, there's places where they shouldn't, but, like... The, the, things are generally safer now than they were in the 90s. So, we turned out okay. Yeah, I, I think that... Oh, like, as, as long again. as you have a way to, like... I don't know. I don't know. Like, 
I, I, I also think that things aren't necessarily more dangerous than they were in the 90s because we do have a much better ability to communicate with uh, the younger people in the family. You know what? A lot of kids have cell phones these days, and that actually would make me a little less worried. Because it's it... a real, pro it's a real problem that kids have cell phones. Because you realize how hard it is to do like a proper Agatha Christie style murder mystery when all the kids have cell phones. You Just know, like, so, what you have weird. is that Where did they go? suddenly the cell towers in town go down. Bam. They're not working yeah. for some reason, and then you can have an Agatha Christie murder mystery again. It That's all you like, need. Yeah, but yeah, so you have to have this random magical event in order to have a murder mystery. That's, it's not magical. Seems... Cell phone towers go down all the time. Or what? What if they go up into the mountains? Suddenly the cell phones don't work. In fact, one thing that can add a lot of suspense in murder mysteries is something that's usually used to keep people safe doesn't work. And then yeah. they start freaking out. Oh my out. goodness, the, the solution from Third Tale is great. So the skybox is is like an actual wall in this game. So like Third Tale was really trying to do this jump and just kept uh, bouncing off the skybox and was having trouble. And like you can make that jump, but instead Third Tale just threw the dog across the gap, and I love it. I think that's great. Honestly, it's a. <laughs> uh, I love it when games give you a few different options for how to complete a level. Uh, that's usually a good way to think about game design. With that said, yeah, this wasn't originally a Mary Kate and Ashley game. Uh, it was Maya the Bee. So it's kind of a little bit cheap that they just took a whole bunch of stuff from another game, reskinned it. And sold it as the same thing. It's as lazy as Anubis 2 on the Wii, okay? <laughs> we just keep going back to Anubis 2 on Anubis. the Wii. Anubis! Well, I'm just thinking about Anubis all day today, okay? That's all that's on my mind. Uh, fair, I guess. They yo noited it per Amazing Toaster. Oh, yeah. What's the original Anubis? I think it, uh, asked Chad, I think it was the. Uh, the, 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 the Gingerbread Man game. That was the original Anubis. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm just watching the third tail try to throw the dog at enemies, and the dog just went up onto the higher platform instead. The projectile arc is a little bit difficult when your just projectile a is a dog. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it looks like Martin's on the final level of the first case. Nice! So. Martin is in the lead then, huh? Oh no, Tempest Troll and Third Tail are on the second case. Well, whatever. You know. Martin is in third. <laughs> so, Wolf, I have a feeling that today, like, for this entire show, I've already been so far off uh, before I add my ADHD meds and... Let's just say that I feel about how I normally feel if I haven't taken them. So I'm, I'm just like so woo right now for no good reason and I don't know why. Maybe it's because uh, I did escape from Anubis yesterday and he's cursed me. Uh, it's perfectly logical explanation. As far as I can say, yeah. So, does the character have to stay by the switch in order to keep the door open? Uh, no, it will close automatically after a little bit of time. Oh, but... okay. Well, there yeah. we go, Third Tail got it. Anyway, so welcome to this definitely not honey, de definitely not, uh, honeycomb with definitely not bees inside of it on Third Tail's screen. Yeah. And on Tempestral screen, they are neck and neck. <sighs> We've got dirt escalators. This no, is a Mary Kate National game, you could have put them in a mall. And had escalators. What no, the crap? we're in a volcano. I think. That is definitely not a beehive. I can't unsee bees. They just look like bees to me all the time. Everything looks like a... Well, I mean, it's based off of the Maya the Bee and the first thing oh, no, that you saw. There were absolutely is... bees in the, in the Maya version. It's just... <laughs> they didn't even try on this level. That just actually looks like a beehive. Where? Which this level? Whole, this whole level. That tail looks like on. dirt. How does this look like a bee? Have you ever seen a beehive? Not from the inside, no. Okay, it doesn't look like this. I mean, you just make it slightly yellower. This is dirt. Look at, look at those enemies. Those are bees. Those are 100% bees. 
Uh, yeah, they do look like bees. I would say the enemies look like bees, but they're trying to find the missing plant per Martin screen. Let's go find the missing plant. It's such... it's... You know what? There's something that I love about how low stakes their discovery effort is. Like, they're not solving murders. They're not solving, like, arsons. They're solving somebody stole this plant. And nobody else is gonna do it because nobody cares about a freaking plant. Who cares about this plant? The oh, Olsen I sisters. I can't believe you don't care about the plant. I mean, like, okay, if it is your plant and you've grown an attachment to this plant, then maybe it makes sense that you care about the plant. But other than that, like, I don't know. I'd probably just not care. Wow. And and because of that, like, if somebody was like, my plant has disappeared and it's not in the house, I'm just going to be like, well, I don't know where it is, and I don't know where you could even hide a plant in our house. And honestly, I'm not going to go ask around the neighborhood to see if somebody has seen this freaking begonia that you got. What, what I if hate it's a begonias. important plant? Well, begonias oh. aren't important. What if it's... I mean, what if it's like a million dollar plant? What plant is a million dollars? This looks like an office plant. It might not even be a real plant. It looks plastic. It's, it's, a, it's a Game Boy Color. It's very hard for a Game Boy Color to make things look realistic. Someone is saying drugs plants. Let me just say, no. Drug plants are not worth $400,000. We are not having Mary Kay to actually uh, rescue somebody's weed. That is not what, <laughs> what is happening here. <laughs> Mary Kay and Ashley. <laughs> now, South Park game, that is absolutely what would be happening here, is we'd be rescuing someone's weed. But hey, it's not here. <laughs> hey, we gotta go find that. We gotta go find the plant. Wait, that is not... What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, where'd you put the plant? Okay, that is a that is a scarily good Cartman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think we know we just gotta go find a plant. I know where it is. I know who messed with it. <laughs> but someone did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have seen like two episodes of South Park in my life. It's okay. Like yeah, so the third tale is now in the level where we discover that Clue can swim in lava just fine. Uh, and... Just so you know, chat, uh, this was originally going to be a South Park game. Uh, so actually having... We don't really need to go and make a ROM hack of this that's South Park because that was the original beta game. And then it changed to Maya the Bee, and then it got adapted into Mary-Kate and Ashley with very minimal changes, and... Uh, simply put, you don't even have to uh, put any work into finding a South Park version. There's already one. Yep. Yeah, it is apparently part of the Giga League. Hey, man, Kate, you... do you know where my plant is? <laughs> you gotta go find my plant. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's the South Park characters are trying to get Mary Kate and Ashley to find their plant. <laughs> that sounds like something that would have happened in some episode of South Park. I'm not gonna lie. They're like, what kind of planet it is? I, mean, I can't tell you. <laughs> but yeah, so Third Tail has made it to the first level with invisible ladders. They're marked with arrows. They're just invisible, and I don't understand, but I love it. Yeah, these are weird ladders. I don't like it. I really don't like... Yeah, these are supposed to be elevators. Why would a bee need an elevator? They can fly. They had Why escalators. <laughs> It literally had escalators in the previous level. Why would bees have escalators? Everyone likes escalators. They're really convenient. <laughs> okay. But bees don't need them. You would... I wouldn't put an escalator in a beehive, and neither should you. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not a bee. I don't think I should get a say in the bees' internal architecture. Like, I think they can have whatever they want in their beehives. So let me try to see. I did find the manual. I'm going to see if there's, like, any any skill about... Or any skill? Any information about this freaking plant that we're trying to find. Okay, the girls need to use all their skills to hunt down a rare specimen for Freddy Flora's plant farm. 
Who the crap is Freddy Flora? I, I, I'm pretty sure he's Freddy Flora. Oh my gosh. The first case, by the way, is really funny. Uh, it says something spooky's going on at the Thorn Mansion. You'll be busy as a bee collecting all ten pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> You'll be busy as a bee. <laughs> no, I, I, they didn't even translate. You can throw the dog at the fire? This is on the nose. The yes, you can you murder. The fire. I didn't know you could kill the fire You with can the dog. murder the fireballs with the dog. Yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness, that makes you know it so much easier. The third level, they go to Camp Big Bear. You know what What else is associated with bees and honey? Freaking bears! Okay, Funhouse Mystery. There's They go to tons of fun amusement park, and then there's a monster there. And then finally, the case of the hotel who done it. Girl's mom had some of her jewelry stolen, and they have to look for it. See, those things are a little bit be better than finding a freaking plant. Freddy Flora just... I don't care if it's a rare specimen. If it's not like a corpse blossom or... I don't know. A corpse? You know the corpse why, why blossom? Killing people? No, it's a rare plant and it smells gross. Well, if it smells like a... Why would people want a plant that smells like a corpse? It doesn't make any sense. Because it's rare. That's why. Why do people eat... Freaking 100 year old eggs because it's rare. I assume it also tastes good. No, it doesn't. Why would it Are taste sure? good? It's a freaking 100 them, so year old know. egg. Yeah, Tem uh, Tempestral fully exploring the everything in the map besides the switches on the first side of the lava. Uh, but he does know about them now. Okay, I'm trying to find if there's any information about Freddy Flora in Mary Kay. I'm pretty sure they just made up this character. I mean, somebody made up the character. Could have been them. I mean, it could have been based off of a real person. Watch the next one. They're like, help OJ Simpson recover his rare baseball jacket. It's like, this hasn't aged well, this game. Oh yeah, we were talking about naming people based off of celebrities. It's usually not the best, but there has to have been somebody who named their kids OJ. And then later been like, ah, maybe that wasn't the best call. Mm, possible. I think my favorite one was, uh, probably should not give out someone's actual real name. So let's not do that. But just one per one of my teachers, like, Why really, can't the like, dog swim in lava? I don't uh, know how the dog can swim in lava. I, I brought this up earlier. But like we were really that. talking about beehives. Yeah, it's true. Well, okay. Sorry, you had a story going on, and I so rudely interrupted. No, it's, it's fine. I don't know. It's just one of my one of my teachers just loved how her first initial plus her last name became a certain word, and so she gave all of her kids the same first initial. Just every single one. Uh, I can't, there I can't are... actually explain this story because I can't give her name, her last name. But. That's fair. There, there, there are actually a lot of people here in Utah who do similar things. Uh, given people, are the kids like all of the boys' names start with a J and all the girls' names start with a K. Uh, considering no. that there are families that are like ten kids. That... Don't do that. The way the human brain works is it focuses on the first letter of names. By doing this, you literally just confuse everyone forever. Just Please Utah get... things, okay? This is just Utah things. This is what how we do All it here. All of your kids need to start have their first name start with different letters. Look, it's better Please. than having every kid with a Bible name. Uh, because that is very cop or Bible slash Book of Mormon. You'd be surprised how many, like, Moroni's there are. There are a lot of them. Bible names are pretty. Uh, what is, like, is Bible Moroni names are from Mormon? Uh, from the Book of Mormon, yeah. Uh, who, in, who on earth is she slash he? Moroni is the... Let's see, one of the main people, I believe, who was supposedly t uh, preserving the Book of Mormon. Uh, and I believe the... A uh, person who buried the golden plates in the ground back at about 600 AD ish, and uh, uh, then ended up being the guy who showed up to Joseph Smith and was like, "Yo, let me show you to the plates." 
Yeah, uh, very important okay. character in Mormon mythology. Hmm. Uh, and honestly, he was, he was kind of cool. Yeah, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, like, the thing that I hate is, like, when I see somebody who has a very Mormon name, I'm like, oh, and they're, I'm like, Ammon, okay, interesting, and they're like, I'm not Mormon anymore. I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, still, kind of a fine name, and they're like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> It's like, okay. I mean, well, I mean, okay. Most, I mean, for better or for worse, most English names can be derived from Hebrew eventually. If you go back far enough. Yeah, but those weren't. <laughs> those, are, those are much newer. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, some of them were actually, like, names based off of, like, local lakes and such that, uh... Because guess what? Uh, as it turns out, when you're writing a book and not translating a book, a lot of the names from your local area tend to get changed a little bit and recycled. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Western New York has a lot of really good lake names. I'm it does, it does, but it, it, it's really funny yeah. to, like, take a look at a map around the area where Joseph Smith grew up and be like, oh, I recognize that name and 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 that name in the Book of Mormon. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm blabbing. If my sister is here, I apologize. I will stray away from this conversation. <laughs> I don't know. It's As someone who's from Western New York, it's very fun to like just give people names on a map, though, and just say, quick, pronounce this combination of letters. And, they're, and I'm just like, why can't you pronounce Sk Skajakwada? It's a very normal name. Just Skajakwada. It rolls off the tongue. We... We here have a lot of names based off of uh, Indian tribes and such. Uh, and any of those names are going to be impossible for people to pronounce. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what the names of most of the, the lakes are. Uh, originally, they're Iroquois names. Yeah. Honestly, I, I would feel a little bit cooler about that. Like, had history been a little bit different... I do feel like it's a little bit like, hey, let's go ahead and steal whatever name you were using. We stole everybody else, might as well steal the names you're using here. <laughs> oh, yeah. American history. Fascinating stuff. Everybody, if you are not uh, part of the U.S., uh, if you grew up elsewhere, don't worry. We have a lot more history than uh, Donald Trump. We do? And, Are you sure? Oh, yeah. And a lot of it is really cool. I, I mean, my bachelor's degree was on American studies. Uh, and uh, there's some really, really fascinating stuff. And I could just talk about history, like, forever. Her tail has finished the second case. Oh, my gosh. Look at that dog. Does not it's look at all like the dog game. in the game. He fi and Third Tail has figured out the quickest way out of the bonus game is to jump off Jump to cliff. your death? Oh no! Everybody, it nice. was a plant. I'm surprised that the puzzles... The puzzle ended up showing that there was a plant. <laughs> I mean, considering yeah, that the whole goal was to get the plant. There's now we're at a summer camp where there's a mystery and it might be ghosts. And we have to prove whether or not it's ghosts. Spoilers, it's not ghosts. The is it another plant? Fireball, it's going to be another fireball, plant. Those fireballs look really a lot like ghosts. Oh, those are definitely ghost fireballs flying through the air. Uh, wait, where? I don't see any ghosts or fireballs. On, uh, I'm looking at Martin's screen right now. Well, those that's because we're in the volcano. They're trying to get the plant. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, ghosts are in the volcano, not in the... Why are the ghosts in the volcano? I don't know, but <laughs> you explain this. I'm not the one who, like, is defending this game. I'm attacking. I, I, I feel more like midfielding this game, I think. Oh, okay. That's fair. Or special teams. I don't know which support metaphor I'm going to go for. <laughs> There's too many kinds of football. I need to pick one. Oh, there's drippy stuff. You, what is it dripping? I don't even understand why this would ghost drip. Snot. It's dripping ghost snot. Oh, ectoplasm. Yeah. 
sure use a technical name. You're the science boy. What are you talking about, Doe Wolf? You went into some sort of scientific field, right? I went into, I mean, yes, but it's computer science. <laughs> I mean, technically, it has science in the name. Oh, yes, but it's really more math than, than uh... I mean, they used to call what I did a social science, because that's totally a thing. Social sciences are things. Yeah, right. Well, go ahead. Explain me using social science. Huh? I, I feel like it'd be easier to use biology. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, that's sort of a social science, right? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a social being using science. Social science. I suppose. <laughs> Whatever. We've got less than 10 minutes here. The third tail is definitely in the lead. Uh, for the other players, though, it looks like Seth has fallen the most behind. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Tempestral in second, and Martin's in third, and Sash in fourth. And there's a pretty clear distance between all of them. Yeah, what are the stakes with this match, by the way? This I'm... is a five-point match, so one player is going to go home. Sath really needs to do well in this last minute or so and just get... Well, the thankfully, get the he's got seven pieces. whole last minutes, so he's got plenty of time. Yeah, and it seems like the puzzles aren't really too complicated. You know, don't jump to your death. That's a good thing. Uh... Let your dog go through the lava that's totally not honey. That's good. Uh, climb ladders. Avoid fire. Fire burns the girls. <laughs> I, I feel like fire also burns the dogs. Well, I guess, well unless you're attacking. I don't, okay, I don't know what part of the lore says that Ashley has the arms to throw a dog like a missile at fire. But that's... Like, that's got, that's, like, is there some part of lore where, like, she's just constantly working out in this show? Is she buff as heck? I don't, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not abnormally, like, weak because they're going and, like, actually solving mysteries. Honestly, like, I have nothing but, I, I have nothing bad to say about the new adventures of Mary-Kate and Ashley. It's like, guess what? Two girls got to make some really cheesy movies, and uh, my sisters watched them. I watched a little bit. I'm like, this is really cheesy, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, and then they made Buku Bucks, uh, got out of the acting business because it really wasn't for them. And now, hopefully, they're just living their dreams and, uh, you know, being fashion designers. And I mean, they have Buku Bucks. They can do whatever they want now. Yeah. More bucks than I got. I've got... Boo Bucks. Less than Buku. Just Boo. Well, you have more Boo Bucks if people, uh, you know... <laughs> With our Prime subscription. <laughs> Everybody, oh, guess what? If you have Amazon Prime, you can go ahead and give me some blue box. I, I'm sorry. I am awful at being a shell. I'm worse. <laughs> well, we gotta, we gotta work on that. I, I can't help you with this, but someone's gotta work on this with you. <laughs> oh, Radama Ford is saying that Tempestrol apparently understands plant. I don't know what that means. He might have said something on stream, but he has he has solved the second case if he could just, like, tag the plant. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure you just tag it through the floor, but that works too. And For yeah, that is through the second case. Very nice. A new bonus game. That is a solid second place for Tempestrel at this point, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people... I see somebody in chat asking if Mary-Kate and Ashley are as relevant nowadays as Macaulay Culkin. And I'd say that, that you don't, uh, Home Alone, the kid actor from Home oh, Alone. That, that, uh, I'd say that Macaulay he... Culkin is starting to become a little bit more popular again. His brother, uh, as well, is doing some acting. I believe he was in the new, uh, Under the Banner of Heaven show that was on Hulu that's about Mormonism. Uh, that was his brother who was in that. Macaulay Culkin, though, is mostly focusing on his band and... Uh, occasionally makes appearances elsewhere. I'd say that, like, he's doing what he wants to do right now, which is good. Uh, and, uh, probably, he had some rough spots, 
but is doing a lot better these days. Which tends to be the case for with a lot of child actors. The important part is making it through the rough spots and coming out on top. I, I feel like this might happen with some of the people who are in Stranger Things, some of the child actors there, and I really hope it doesn't. Because... Like... They're so good. They're so good, and I, I just want them to have happy lives and not go through the whole recycling bin that is Hollywood. Nah, nah. T Dark Tale enjoying the sinking into the floor animation, which is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I don't understand that, why... It, it's totally it not a ladder. Now. It's it's not even a ladder. You're just sinking into the sand. I I don't understand why like they didn't just bend five. Okay, it takes a lot more than five minutes to make a proper crouching animation. But they should have made a proper crouching animation. <laughs> Rather than just sink the sprite into the floor. Oh yeah, uh, there was also a book that came out recently by Janet McCurdy. Uh, she grew up. Her mother was Mormon, and her book is called I'm Glad My Mother Died. Uh, and let's just say that, uh, sh yeah, she had a rough that, that is, childhood. That, is, that, that makes very clear the thesis of the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, apparently it's pretty funny, but also it has some pretty terrifying stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, I, I need to read that because... Uh, while there there are definitely some very, very good uh, religious people out there, there are also people who are the parents of Je uh, Janet McCurdy from iCarly who are essentially absolutely terrible people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, I would say that, like, I love the way that my sister is, you know, she... Uh, Essentia, she is pretty religious and, uh, very, very involved in Mormonism, but, uh, Anyways, also, she is so the, good with As we approach the final minute, uh, Seth and yes. Martins are on the fi same level. So this is suddenly really close for third place. And third place matters, because fourth place goes home. Yes! So here we go. Uh, pay attention to these two players. Will one of them be able to make more progress than the others. I don't believe we have a sudden death rule for this match. It will end on the hour. Yep, and Martins did make it here first, so Martins has the advantage. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so what Martins needs to do is change the order, because basically if you, have to, if you have characters in order, they like start auto-bouncing. Like, currently, Ash, uh, Ashley's auto-bouncing, but he needs other characters to be auto-bouncing too. So, Dog needs to not be on the bottom. Dog needs to be in the middle of this tower. Dog on... Do, I was gonna say dog on top. Dog on middle! Dog on middle. Dog on middle. Well, it's not gonna happen, but I don't think it matters too much because that is time. Why can the dog climb up and down? I... Dogs... Have you never seen a dog climb a, climb a ladder? I've seen a few oh. dogs climb ladders, actually. Uh, they have to really be trained and have practice, but they some dogs can. I mean, this, this dog is, pro, is a professional missile. <laughs> professional mi What does that mean? I don't know. I, I have to tell people in chat how they did, so give me a second. Okay. Professional missile dog. You know what? Third tail definitely appears to have taken first. Tempestral second... Martin third, Seth fourth. Martin and Seth got to the same level, but unfortunately Martin was there first. And because this is sort of a puzzle game where there's really not a good sense of progress until somebody has beaten the level, that means that the tiebreaker goes to Martin. Seth, unfortunately, is going to be eliminated from Cusar Grande. But that's what happens. You got We got to start getting people out. It, that, is, that is the inevitable course of a tournament is there can only be one. It is Highlander. Yeah! I'm letting Third Tail know that they can come and chat with us if they would like. 
How far did oh, you expect people to get in this game, by the way? Um, I thought they'd get about to where third tail into Pestrel. I thought they'd get around the end of the second case. Um, apparently, Pestrel has feelings. I'm not sure what he's been saying in his stream. Uh, because, yeah, I will, I will have to find out. I'm pretty sure he will let me know how he feels about this at some point. Uh, apparently third tail loved this game. Oh, wow. Okay, well, can go. Uh, yeah, uh, Martin okay, is well, very I sad about not getting to head rock breaking parts. That's fair. Hello there, Tempestrol. Welcome and congratulations on your second place. Yeah, you can talk. You're allowed to. Well, oh, whatever. We lost it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Discord is sometimes, but I'm sure Tempest Troll will come back and chat. He's pretty. He's pretty good. He's a good friend of the stream. Seth. 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 Uh, Seth. I'm thank in. you for the raid. Yeah, there we are. Tempest Troll. Hello, and congrats on your second place today. Thanks. I'll take second place. Yeah. Uh, oh, I I was like, oh no, puzzle game. This is kind of like that that South Park. GBC game that I played once for Mystery Tournament. Not uh, looking forward to this. Uh-oh. It actually what? is the same game. Is it the same game? You didn't it, say that. I didn't <laughs> expect people to have played the random game that was part of the Giga Leak that was wow. never actually released. What? I, I didn't... That that match that was from that was from Mystery Tournament uh, 13, which was before the Giga Leak. And oh, also, well, then and, al and also, uh, you you listed another game that was a di that was yeah uh, the Maya was a, so, yeah. so listing both of those games. But all right, well that explains uh, an awful lot huh. about why this game is so terrible. Uh, that game is misery. Well, if you if you feel uh, if you want to disqualify me, I am uh, not that disappointed. This game is not very well designed. <laughs> That's well, something that we can go ahead and talk about later uh, as staff to see, because like right. th this still definitely was a bit of a challenge. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, I thought, should I mention this? You know what? Doe Wolf did mention another game that this was similar to, like this was a ROM hack or something, or like or like a, a localized clone with a, a license slapped on it. If, if the South Park game was one of it, then I'm sure he would have mentioned it. I just went, I'm not going to worry about it. So, uh, joke's on me. I guess I should have brought it up if I had, a, I had second thoughts and I should have asked. That's, that's on me. Yeah, no, it's I, all good. Um, yeah, no, I, I actually didn't realize, uh, until like a week ago that we even, that there was even a ROM with that, but it was just, I don't know. Uh, okay. I, I didn't think that version was completed. Like, it's, it I, is I, a different I, game. For what it's worth, the level design is different, but the, oh, the mechanics are the same. The uh, level design is different. It's probably fine, but but the me the mechanics are the same, uh, and and I was sort of remarking that when I was playing this, like you know, this has the exact same problem as that one, which is that the uh, it's been a few years since I played the other one, but but what I observed in in that game and and the same thing in this game is that um, the small fast character is completely useless. The character who can activate switches is really frustrating to work with, but they're the most important character and the fun character to play, the one who can bounce people on their heads uh, is uh, the most important character in the entire game. Oh, yeah. Or is, is the other most important character. And like, th they, they got to the point clearly with this game where they went, where they understood, the designers understood that they had three characters who had slightly different abilities and they needed to have them synergize in certain ways. And they almost got to the point where the levels were designed so that you had to do them in a, like a certain certain order but then they they missed the part where they designed the levels to uh not incentivize you to just just bring all three characters together at the same time constantly there's nothing really okay. preventing you there's nothing disincentivizing you from just bringing all three characters with you all the time constantly um and i feel like maybe if there was a better a bigger size difference between the characters maybe they could have done something with that i don't know the dog could get small i learned that in one level they never use that again it's not very, like, this isn't actively unpleasant to play, but it's not well designed. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Uh, so yeah, we're, it's we're gonna- It's a good round one or round two pick, basically. I, I think that I would agree with that. I, I've never really been a big fan of the three Vikings formula, if that's what the formula is called. Uh, oh, we've lost Lost Vikings? Isn't or yeah. Lost Vikings Blizzard? 3, the three Blizzard, yep. beautiful Vikings. Game. Not lost to me. Uh, 
There, Lost there are a few other storm. games that use a lot of the same similar elements. I mean, Trine is like one of the most notable modern versions that is yeah. actually... I really Trine's enjoy the Trine though. games. Yeah, they're, they're Trine, good. Trine, I mean, Lost it, Vikings is also pretty good. Uh, so I've heard, and yet... It's I if it's like this, I mean it, it's probably a lot better than this. It's be a fair. lot better than this. All three characters yeah. are fully have full purpose. And there's even more characters in the sequel. There's there's okay. like five characters in it rotate three yeah. you get to play as. What's kinda cool about it is well are you talking about Trine? Uh, uh no, this is Lost Vikings. One oh, two, Lost Vikings talking there. I've gotcha. I played a little bit of Trine one, but yeah. not Trine two or Trine three. One cool thing about those as well is that uh sometimes there are multiple ways to solve a puzzle and uh depending on what skills you get better at uh in the game you can use those for your advantage. You don't have to just rely on there's only one way to do every single thing. I, I think that it's a very good modern series. With that said, uh, you were still able to do a fantastic here, you know, making it to the third world. That That's great. Uh, we will discuss and see if there's a reason to give a mulligan for this. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll come up with the decision as staff. But uh, if the level design is sufficiently different, that might be enough to say that it, I, I don't, the point is, we'll talk. Yeah, it, it's definitely a different, it's definitely a different game in terms of level design, but the mechanics are identical. Uh, and like, even like the speed of the characters and stuff was the same. So, I, I mean, it, whatever, whatever is decided, I mean, I, I'm fine. Uh, Cause I, now I know, and for all of you people who are watching, if you have second thoughts, bring them up before your match. Uh, because because you know what? The GMs are not perfect. Yeah, I no, I, I was, you know, what are you bit, talking about? I know Dove this. is perfect. Why should... Uh, I did jamming for a bit. I can't I believe... I know I'm not perfect. I don't know why I thought that somehow uh, Dole would also be. <laughs> Dole Wolf, and, and I'm not know about this your other name anymore. Terrible, terrible South Park game that sucks. Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's just aggressively boring. So, oh. what it is. Well, yeah, still, great job, everybody, in the match. Thank you for playing. We're going to go ahead and move on to the second game. So, uh, thank you, Tempest Troll. And Don't Wolf, thank you so much. And don't listen to Tempest Troll. You are perfect. L no, Tempest Troll's right on this one. Lies! You are perfect. I mean, okay, you hate cucumbers, but that's your hey, only flaw. You, <laughs> you, you, you could have given us, you could have given us like, so, like Snull 3D Blast or something. I don't know if that exists, by the it way. Doesn't but if it exist, does, but basically Sonic 3D Blast is already a Snull game, so it doesn't need that's, to. It's true. Justified. <laughs> anyway, you could have given us that or or whatever, and I and you didn't. Thank hey, you. I, you <laughs> Right, Mental Note, next time I get Tempestro, I'll give, I'll give him Snulf. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Bye, bye friends. See ya. See ya. <laughs> everybody, this is Cuso Grande, the Bad Video Game Tournament. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed and who is supporting the channel. This is September, so you are able to get subscriptions cheaper this month. If you are considering just doing a one-time sub, uh, you are welcome to do that. There are some long-time people here as well. All of the support that you give in order to keep this channel running is extremely appreciated. Uh, luckily, you know, with the GDQ show happening as well every other Friday, uh, that has been a little bit more stability and uh, that is helping me out as well. So I just really appreciate everybody for all the support that you have.